Hello again. Uh, for our next session, I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Tristram Hunt, Director of the VNA. As Director Tristram's championed design education in UK schools and encouraged debate around the history of the museum's global collections. He's a former member of Parliament for Stoke-on-Trent and has a doctorate in Victorian history from Cambridge University and is the author of several books. Welcome, Tristram. Vicky, thank you. Um, well, good afternoon, uh, everyone. It's a pleasure uh, to be with you uh, at uh, Chatham House. I was never invited here as a member of Parliament, so it's wonderful to be here uh, as director uh, of the VNA. Um, and to be part of the London Design Biennale Summit alongside such a fantastic lineup of speakers, not all of whom are from the VNA, but I like to think the vast majority are uh, from the VNA, um, alongside a wealth of creative ideas and uh, international participation. After some difficult months and indeed years in the face of the pandemic, uh, London, our vibrantly global creative capital, is starting to come back to life. At each challenge in its history, London has pulled through and it will do so again thanks to its incredible diversity, resilience and above all the stores of creativity. As you know, there is energy, there is radicalism, there is brilliance um, in the city. At the Victoria and Albert Museum, like many other cultural institutions uh, around the capital, pre-pandemic programming has resumed. Our seven-day public offering for free uh, has returned to the joy uh, of many. We're probably tracking still about 60% uh, of pre-COVID numbers, and that's mainly down to half our visitors normally coming from abroad. So hopefully this summer, uh, those numbers uh, are going to increase. But we meet together to discuss the role of design and collaboration uh, at a time uh, of deep crisis for those values across Europe. Remapping collaborations, the 2023 London Design Biennale theme, feels more important than ever. So if we are to continue to make the case for London as a global design hub, a place of creative and cultural excellence, it's the pursuit of globally significant conversations, initiatives and interactions like those fostered at the VNA and here at the London Design Biennale that will help to maintain London's special status. And obviously a special note of thanks to Sir John Sorrell, Ben Evans, Vicky Brooks and Eric Chen for their important leadership towards this shared goal. So with this in mind, what I'd like to do uh, this afternoon um, is highlight an important example of international partnership at the VNA. A story that demonstrates that in the discovery of a challenging museum provenance, there may also be an opportunity to build an enduring transcultural partnership. For museums, this is the moment for embarking upon truly global conversations around the colonial and imperial past, around decentering collections, drawing a period when the need to reimagine the practice of the museum along more equitable and encompassing lines is so urgent. So what I'd like to do is talk about two dazzling objects with a remarkable history from the Gilbert Collection, which you, some of you will know used to be uh, in Somerset House in a transition period, uh, but we're now very proud to host uh, at the v &A. And the objects are a golden ewer, which you can see here, created over 4,000 years ago by an unknown goldsmith in Anatolia, which now finds itself in a modern artistic dialogue with a golden funnel created last year in London by the British-Israeli goldsmith, Adi Tok. These two stunning objects speak powerfully to themes of making, the movement and belonging of objects, and indeed issues of spoliation and appropriation. So the Gilbert Collection, here you can see uh, the gallery, uh, was built up by the post-war fashion entrepreneur, London fashion entrepreneur, turned California real estate developer, Sir Arthur Gilbert uh, and his first wife, Rosalind. And their chosen field of collecting was British and European masterpieces. 
But as an open-minded collector, uh, he was occasionally fascinated by objects from elsewhere. And when Sir Arthur first laid eyes on that ancient golden ewer, he was mesmerized by uh, this small, it's about so big, uh, exquisitely beautifully decorated gold vessel. Created by a Hattian goldsmith, the ewer had been worked from a sheet of gold. So it was a single sheet uh, of gold, skillfully embossed uh, with complex patterns. Its purpose was to accompany uh, a Hattian ruler into the afterlife. Fascinated by the object and its evocative origin story, Arthur Gilbert acquired the year in 1989 uh, from an antiquities dealer in Los Angeles. What Arthur Gilbert did not know at the time, or indeed up to his passing, was that the dealer from whom he purchased it was involved in the trade of illicit antiquities, part of a shadowy network that sold looted antiquities to unsuspecting museums and private collectors who were duped with false provenance statements designed to conceal the true itinerary of the objects. We know now that these treasures had in fact been illegally excavated from burial sites uh, and exported from their countries of origin. So in 2018, the Gilbert Collection embarked on a major research project into the provenance of the collection. A thousand dazzling items from delicate micro mosaics to enameled portrait miniatures, seeking to uncover important information about who owned these pieces before they were acquired by Rosalind and Arthur Gilbert. And essentially this was driven by the Washington Accords connected to Nazi era um, spoliation. Um, that the trustees of the Gilbert Collection, of which I'm one, wanted to be absolutely certain that nothing in the collection was expropriated from Jewish families uh, by the Nazis uh, during the 1930s uh, and 1940s. Uh, and really that focus uh, on Nazi era, Nazi era spoliation uh, uh, gave great energy into the kind of research into provenance that museums should always uh, be doing. Despite significant efforts after the Second World War by the Allies and European governments, many of those objects looted by the Nazis were never returned to their rightful owners. Instead, objects ended up in public and private collections, often acquired without knowledge of their background or uh, whose hands they had passed through. And because we have this very, very effective legal system um, that when something is regarded as uh, Nazi era uh, spoliation, that there is an independent appeals system uh, and family members can seek to have the item uh, returned. And the VNA has in fact returned items uh, to family members in the past. So we appoint this brilliant provenance and spoliation research curator for the Gilbert collection called Jacques uh, Schumacher. And he goes right through the collection. And actually uh, what's interesting is he discovers these remarkable histories of items looted from the Nazis but actually returned then to uh, the Jewish families and then actually put back on the market by the children of those families who didn't like them anyway. Uh, but you, you, you work your way through the histories of these objects. And we didn't find hugely problematic histories in terms of Nazi spoliation. But what we did find was a problem with the Anatolian ewer, which Jacques discovered was illegally excavated from a burial site, followed by the kind of laundering uh, of the goods by a well-known uh, uh, family who specialised in these activities in Italy uh, and then Switzerland and then making its way uh, to California. So we immediately contacted the Turkish Ministry of Culture and Tourism to share our findings. Experts from the ministry confirmed that Arthur Gilbert had been deceived about the Ewer's provenance and that it had, as we suspected, been illegally exported. In partnership with the Turkish Ministry of Culture, we agreed that the most appropriate place for the Golden Ewer 
would be the Museum of Anatolian Civilizations in Ankara, where it would be possible to appreciate this incredibly precious object alongside other Hattian artifacts. And in October last year, as a trustee of the Gilbert Collection, I traveled to Ankara uh, to help present the Ewa to the museum in a ceremony attended by the Turkish Minister of Culture, who welcomed the return of the Ewa as the restitution uh, of an important part of their cultural heritage. Hashtag welcome home. Um, and <laughs> And we made all six of the leading uh, Turkish news programs that evening. Uh, very similar coverage, interestingly. Um, but a gap now existed in the galleries. And to my mind, a vital role of the museum is to provide a platform for conversation and a place for convergence <laughs> around its collections. The founding mission of the V&A is to inspire makers and designers and artists and architects who would come to the museum to engage with the material of the past. This type of design education informs contemporary practice and innovation. Leading metalsmith, Adi Tok, had formed a deep artistic connection with the object. She loved the Ewer, which became a powerful source of inspiration to her. She shared her excitement with her students at the Royal College of Art, whom she brought to the museum to study this remarkable object and to better understand the ancient techniques in use to this day. The absence of the object sparked an idea. Addy wanted to create an artwork that would keep the Ewer and its remarkable story present in the galleries, even as it has gone to Ankara. The Ewer's departure from the Gilbert Galleries would not be the end of the conversation, but would instead mark the beginning of a new one, a transnational dialogue about the timelessness of materials and the remarkably complex lives of crafted objects. And so her response, her outstanding piece, Place to Place, thoughtfully responds to the Ewer and its story. To Addy, the Ewer's broken spout acts as a metaphor for a loss of direction. A funnel on its own not only implies that something is missing, it also concentrates and provides a new direction. A funnel connects between spaces, and it is only ever a container for a moment. There is also an openness, an acceptance in the form and function that resonates with the story of donating the Ewer. A funnel is a generous object. The title, Place to Place, relates to a transitional state in time, as well as between spaces and countries. In creating this funnel, Adi not only employed many of the same techniques used by the Hattian goldsmith thousands of years ago, but she recreated the Ewer's exact alloy. The Ewer was made before the technology to separate metals was developed, which is why it consists of 90% gold, 9% silver, and 1% copper, a composition typical of gold found by panning in rivers. And Adi followed this recipe, from which she spun and hammered uh, the funnel into being, creating an enlarged opening at one end and a thicker, highly polished spout at the other. The highly reflective and polished interior invites you to peer in, where you are greeted by your own reflection, serving as an invitation to reflect on yourself and your relationship to the material world. And the funnel lies effortlessly in what appears to be a headrest, but is in fact a card piece of chukdoni, a creamy white translucent rock found in Turkey. Adi's piece at the V&A serves as a counterpart to the Ewer, now on display at the Museum of Anatolian Civilizations in Ankara. This story serves as a powerful reminder of the role of serendipity in the creation and dissemination of material culture. It was by chance that Arthur, Galbert, Arthur Gilbert added this most unusual piece to his collection, which would bring it far from its homeland to rest then in the galleries of the V&A. And again, it was by chance that Adi Tok, the perfect artist to respond to this treasure, asked the right question at the right time to bring a complex story to an elegant, open-ended conclusion. And to my mind, this brief story exemplifies the possibilities 
of creative collaboration and material response as a way through these complex questions of provenance and appropriation, which are only going to intensify in the coming years. But it also reveals the strength and importance of cultural institutions, creative individuals, engaged officials in outward looking cities like London and Istanbul as critical interpreters of the past and vital brokers towards a multicultural, interconnected, contemporary community. And best of all, you can be part of that community by coming to see the Addy Top Commission for free in the Gilbert Galleries uh, of the V&A seven days a week. And I look forward to welcoming you there. Thank you. <laughs>